Good evening. Welcome to A South Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to lead this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessing of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at Asaw Community Church, where serving and giving begins. You are the center of my joy. Resurrection Day, everybody. Happy Resurrection. He rose. He rose. Hallelujah. He rose. Thank you, Lord, for rising up. feel like praising them. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to, I love to praise his holy to praise him. I love to pray him. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to pray I love to praise Him. Oh, I love to praise His holy name. He's my 
rock, my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. He's the will in the middle. I know he'll never, I know never let me down. He's just a Jew that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. Yes, he is my He's my will. Yes, he is. I know him never, never, never let me down. He's just a Jew. Hey. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, who 
my future yeah and life is worth the living just because Christ lives oh yeah because the risen 
Lion King Seated in majesty yeah. You are the risen King Hold you down. You are the risen King. Yes, you are. Seated in majesty, oh God. You are the risen King. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, yeah. Seated in majesty, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. you are the risen King. You're the risen king, yeah. Oh, death could not hold you down. You are the risen king, yeah. You are, yes, you are. Seated in, in, in majesty, oh God. The risen, the risen King, my soul, my soul, my soul says, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. could not hold you back death could not hold you back death could not hold you back no oh, they went to the tomb but you weren't there Lord, they went, they went, they went, they went to the tomb. Oh, but you was not there, you wasn't there, you wasn't there. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. I'm so glad, I'm so glad death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. 
Our Father and our God, because death could not hold you down, we have a right to the tree of life. We're thankful, Father, that you came and that you died and that you rose for our sins. We are grateful, Father, not because we have been so good, but because of your mercy for allowing your son to know his assignment, to come down, Father, from heaven, from glory, to be amongst us on earth, to be the example, to show us love, and to die for our sins. So we're thankful on this Resurrection Sunday for what you you mean in our lives and for those who who know you personally we we rejoice knowing that you got up with all power in your hand and so we this church we're thankful that we can serve you in spirit and in truth we're thankful father for this another opportunity to be here in this house to worship you father we're thankful for the songs that have been sung we're thankful for the praises that have gone up we're just thankful father because you continue to bless us in spite of you bless us so we're thankful for the blessing we don't take it lightly and we forever and will ever always give you the praise in jesus name amen amen it is uh Man, it is, it's, it's just good when you can just come worship God in spirit and truth and you don't have to have no uh, uh, false pretenses. You just come and allow your heart to be open to receive what God wants to pour in you because we all need to be poured into and lifted up. So I'm so thankful for Mr. Gerard Black and Mr. Teddy Wright. God bless you both. It is another Saturday here at Asaw Community Church where serving and giving begins, and I'm so thankful for the, the people of God. I'm thankful for our membership. I'm thankful for our friends, and I'm just thankful that God has allowed us to still be here to worship him yet another Saturday night in the great city of Villa Rica, Georgia. So thank you, LaDonna Fryer, for the welcome. Thank you, Jeanette, for being on Sound and Lights and all those things that make it just look so effortlessly. So we're just thankful. And it was good to have Minister Cecil and Jeanette back in the house. I, I know you've been working, but I know how it is when you are working and you get to come back into the house of the Lord. And don't get me wrong, you can get a lot of things online, but there's nothing like being here in person. There's nothing like it. I, I, I'm telling you right now, there's nothing like it. And I encourage you to get back into the to places of worship, into your sanctuary, to, to experience it. It's a feeling that, that you just can't get it from, from watching it on television. You have to be here to hear it. And then the most important part of ASO, which I truly believe is what was missing in my life, is after the service is over the fellowship. That's, that's where we grow. So I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for the fellowship that goes here, goes on here. And we have some members that are away, so we're just praying for them. Well, here at Asaw Community Church, I believe there's two things that we can be assured of. You're going to hear a word and you will hear a song. And so I'm thankful that the songs have been sang or sung. Is it sang or sung? Either way. But anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. All right. With that being said and done, we're going to continue. Uh, tonight's message is, is I, don't, I don't really call it part two. It's just a continuation um, because I just believe in every verse there's so much life and so much truth. And I think we have to spend time in each verse to really get what the writer is trying to convey, how it impacts our lives. But more importantly, how we learn so that we are able to share what we learn to those who do not know the Lord personally. And we live in a time right now where you should know the Lord for yourself. And if you don't know the Lord for yourself, I encourage you to connect to a body of believers that will share truthfully the word of God. Truthfully the word of God. And the reason why I say truthfully, because when you receive the word of God truthfully, your foundation is firmly planted in truth. When it's connected to some other uh, situation or agenda, when you find out that it was not truthful, you fail or you fall, and then people tend to stay away from the church. I, I, my grandson, I, I don't know where he's gotten this from, but my youngest, well, no, my, he's my middle grandson. He got baptized on last Sunday in Savannah, Georgia, and, and yeah, it's a blessing, and... Um, 
that he's about, I guess, I guess DJ is about 11 now. There's so many of them. I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, so many, I can't keep up. There's so many of them. There's about seven, eight of them, and I can't keep up with all ages, but, but I was talking to his mother on Friday, and, and, and he said that his church is in Savannah. Uh, pastor Broxton is his pastor. And so Sierra, my daughter, said, well, don't you want to find a church locally that we can all attend? And he said, no, because they lie. Now, I don't know where he got that from. I haven't talked to him. But because he, at his early mindset, feels that they lie, and he wanted to be a part of a church where he knew the truth was being preached. And so this morning, I sent my daughter one of my sermons because I'm saying, well, hey, you know, I ain't lying. I'm telling the truth. I got to let my grandson know, well, come on over here because we're going to give you the truth. Amen. If we give you nothing else, we're going to give you the truth. And I don't know nothing about exegeting and all that stuff that I hear all the time. I just know, open the book, look at the verse. What does the Holy Spirit give you? Share that and then go home and let God be God. So with that being said and done, tonight is just... The last two verses from Luke chapter 19, I was in verses 41 and 42 last week, but tonight we're just going to deal with 43 and 44, but it's found in Luke chapter 19, verses 41 through 44. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I'm just going to read 41 and 42, but I'll be preaching 43 and 44. And it says, starting at verse 1, now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side. Verse 44 says, and level you and your children within you to be ground, to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. My sermon title was, and still is, they didn't know, but he did. They didn't know, but he did. You know what I found to be amazing about life is that when you are in it, you never hear the warnings of others. Think about that for a second. When you are in something, when you're in a situation that, 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 that may look good, but is not good, even if you have an inkling when you are in it, you just don't hear what other people are saying. And it's not just you, it's a lot of people who just don't hear the warning shots or the, or, or the, or, or, or the information that is given to them to say, hey, look, you may want to consider this. Because when you're in it, it's just, it's just hard to rely on other people's understanding when you just want to rely on your own. We, we all do it. We have our own understanding, our own knowledge, our own wisdom, our own experiences. And that's what we rely on in all circumstances, is what we know. And sometimes what you know could get you in trouble. Pride comes before the fall. But it's not until after the fact that you will realize that you were ignoring the truth and now you have to face the consequences. There's, there's some consequences that come along when you ignore truth, the, the consequences. And so we look at these particular verses that when Jesus approached Jerusalem, it says he wept. And last week we talked about it. There are two times in the Bible where Jesus has wept and he wept over his friend Lazarus. And now upon entering Jerusalem, he weeps not because of what lay ahead for him, but because of what's to happen because of their ignorance of who in fact he really was. 
This Jerusalem that he's entering is a magnificent city and its inhabitants there are praising him as he comes in as humbly as you can make an entrance into a city. The king comes in humbly, comes in on a donkey, which is an animal that represents peace. Nobody is going to battle on a donkey. So he comes in and he is weeping because of people's lack of understanding and what's about to come to pass that's already been prophesied. It, it, listen, don't get, don't get lost and think that what was prophesied then is not going to be evident now because Jesus is coming back. There, there are signs, and, and if you're not paying attention, I would encourage you to get into the Word so you can see them for yourself. But this society we live in is changing daily. And I don't know about you, but in all of my 57 years, I have never really felt that we would get close to the end until now because it is an abomination of what is going on and that society has embraced and said it's okay. I've even heard pastors trembling because they can't really tell the truth because they are afraid of who might leave. Jerusalem, the name means a city of peace, but they did not understand the peace that was in their presence because of their own understanding of what the king should look like. We've all been fooled on how things ought to look. There's a certain, there's a certain look that comes with, 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 with what we perceive to be like, like success. People perceive success to be based upon what they see. And, and if you really find people who are truly successful, they don't even waste their money and time in things you can see. Because they understand success and wealth. And so there's a judgment coming upon your rejection. I'm, I'm so thankful that everyone here has accepted that call accepted that, that, that the salvation that they profess because without that, there is a, 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 a judgment coming for your rejection. You might think you're comfortable but now, but, but at any moment, it can change. So in these last two verses, Jesus predicts the attack of the Romans, of the Romans on Jerusalem. He already, he already, we already know what's about to happen because it was already prophesied before Jesus got there, it was prophesied that not only was he coming, what he was going to do. So you can't be, uh, uh, I guess you have to be very, very, very intentional in your understanding and your belief to reject truth that's in your face. Jesus has already done miracles. That's why so many people came to meet him because he had already, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. He, I mean, come on, folks. How many times in life, how many times does somebody have to show you and tell you for you to believe what it is that your eyes and your ears have not only seen and heard? How many times must we tell you over and over and over again the truth? All you got to do is grab hold of it. It's life. I told my daughter this in the conversation on Friday. Life is simple. Life, life, life is simple. It's the choices that you make that make it complicated. Life is simple. How do you, why do you keep saying life is simple? Because if God has the whole world in his hand, if God is capable of all things above what you can think, if, if God is God, then, then, then let me just rest. Let me just rest in him. So, so let's look at the scripture. You know, Jesus already come near. He's already wept. He's already saying, if you had known about this peace, but, but now because of your arrogance, because of, of, of who you think you are, and because of what you think you know, that this truth is now hidden from you. I'm here, but you can't see it, and, and you don't understand. You, you, you cheering me today, but in a few days, <laughs> you're going to side and ask for the release of a guy that's, that's a sinner saved by the same grace I'm giving. 
So verse 43 says, for days will come upon you when your enemies will. That right there, that ought to let you know. That, that ought to let you know that. For days will come upon you when your enemy, it don't say might. It, it says, it says will. So problem number one is that your enemies, and they are coming, and when they come, they are coming to destroy you. Don't you understand in your life, that's what the enemy's job is? The enemy's job is to destroy you, especially when you don't understand the power that God has, not only for you, but for the enemies. Because he can fight your enemies and, and you ain't got to move. We've already established that when Moses took the children of Israel to the Red Sea. He said, just, just stand still and, and, and see the power of God. So, so it says, for days will come when your enemies, so they come in. And it was prophesied that this is coming. This day is coming. It's still being said today that, that there's an end coming. You know, we're getting closer to the end. We, we know that there's an end coming. But guess what? Arrogance strengthens a person's truthful resolve in what they know. That's what arrogance does. Arrogance just makes you a stronger fool. Strong fool, there's some things I just don't have to experience. There's some things I just don't have to endure because of truth. That, 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 that's all I got to say. It's just truth prevails. And when it does, you're so glad you're on the side of truth. So Jerusalem will suffer because they didn't know. And they didn't know who had visited them. We supposed to be in the, the business of truth. But yet we profess one thing and then sometimes live another. And that's confusing. So 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 we don't want to miss what we're supposed to bring to the body. So therefore, let God fight your enemies on your behalf. Because they're coming. See, there are certain words that lead to a fall. There's, there's certain words, certain words that will mess you up. Certain words to get in the middle of a relationship and mess it up. Let me just give them to you. Pride, envy, jealousy, agenda. They all lead to destruction. Jerusalem encompass all of them. So therefore, the Roman armies were really doing exactly what they were inclined to do because they didn't like anything or any anybody. They're they supposed to be bad. Sometimes judgment is swift and sometimes it's delayed. But whenever it shows up, that judgment is in God's timing. It's in God's timing. So it says in verse 43, for, for days will come upon you when your enemies will, and this is what they're telling them. You are being, you know what I'm telling y'all, I don't know about y'all, but Exodus is, is a great book to me. Exodus is a great book. It lets me know about the human spirit, how people feel and think. You know, even after Moses had brought them through the Red Sea, and even after they got to the other side, when Moses went up to talk to God, what did they do? They built, a, they built a golden calf and said, let us worship. See, people are crazy. Boy, you better keep your eye on truth. You better keep your eye on what you know. I don't care what that looks like over there. I'm telling you, you better keep your eye centered on, on this scripture. And so it says, we'll build an embankment around you. The enemies are going to build a wall. And the Romans encircled the city with the wall to do what? To cut off supplies. Listen, in the military, there's a strategy to circle, to circle your the person that you are trying to capture. You're trying to give them no place to go. You want to fortify your position on all sides so that they have to surrender. And, and, and if you surrender in wartime, you're supposed to be treated by uh, uh, um, um, uh, these conventional uh, rules of, of dealing with POWs. You're supposed to. Here, they, there is no rules. They are coming to kill you. Your enemy is coming to kill you. He's going to encircle you. He's going to cut 
off your supplies so that you die a miserable, slow death from starvation. When people want you to starve, they despise you. And there are people around you that, that, that slowly are trying to encircle you to cut you off. Trying to cut you off. There's people in your midst that are doing that because of whatever is, I don't know, whatever's in their heart or whatever's in their mind. But, but they built an embankment around them to surround them so that they could not only watch, but listen. Because when you were in pain, you're crying out. I know some people, they, they pray every night. But then all of a sudden, when something tragic happens, that's, that's a different type of prayer. That's a, a wailing. That's a calling out because you are, you are you're wanting relief. There's, there's anguish in your prayer. I believe this is what happened at, at, when this circle, when, this, when this, uh, the Roman armies circled Jerusalem. I believe that people now in order to realize some things, but it's too late. Why? Because it was hidden from you because you didn't pay attention when everybody came to give you the message of what was coming and what to do to avoid this. Is that not still prevalent today? Hey, look, it's coming. I don't know when. That's not my job. But my job is to tell you right now, prepare your hearts. Prepare your hearts. But they didn't know. But he did. And that's why he wept. Because of their blindness, famine, starvation, and death was was their faith. How, how, how do you know that was their faith? Because it says it right here in the word. It says that for days will come when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close in from every side. Where can you go? Where can you go if every door is locked and you, you can't get out? Where can you go? What do you do when there's no way to get out? There's no one to call. Help is not coming because help came. That's the worst place to be is when help came and you missed it. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't know if y'all remember this report a few months ago, but there was a guy who fell off a ship. And he didn't know how fast the ship was until he fell off. See, sailing along, it feels like it's going slow. But when he hit that water, he realized how fast it was going. That's a sad place to be when, when you think that the, everything is slow, but when it happens, it happens swiftly, and there's nothing you can do. Thankfully, they found him. In your life, before long, if you continue to sit still, your, your enemies will build embankments around you. Your enemies will do that. Why? Because you, you're sitting still because you're not moving in the direction that's pleasing to God. You're not, you're not doing the things that God has called you to do. And when you're not doing things, then you're stagnant. And when you're stagnant, what happens? The enemy. So it says, as it continues on, it says it will build around you, surround you, and close in on you on every side. Be aware when God allows your enemies to advance in your life because of your rejection. Wait a minute, did he just say that God allows it? Well, if God allows everything, then God knows what he's doing and he knows what he's trying to get out from doing what he's already done. He, he put that in the motion. Why? Because you have rejected him. Why? Because you're not calling on him. I don't know who you're calling on, but whoever you're calling on should help you. But when you realize that they can't help you, when you realize that they can't help you, I tell people all the time, all, all I can do is give you truth. God does the rest based upon your relationship with him. But if you ain't got one and you don't really understand your relationship because you ain't spent no time with him, then maybe when you're talking to him, you're talking to him like you're talking to a stranger. So you got to beware. Because even though God allows things to happen in your life. He's allowing it to happen. See where your faith takes you. You got faith. Your faith ought to take you somewhere. Those trials and tribulations in, in your life, there are things that's going to happen, but God says, I got you, and there's a reason. But we got to sometimes understand the reason and move forward in a direction that's what? Pleasing to God. 
I don't understand that. Well, keep living. It says in verse number 44, it says, after he talks about it, Jesus talks about it. Enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close your eyes. And then it says, and level, and level you. Do you know what level you means? That, that's it, flat. That, that's not, listen, where, they, where I live now, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're building some, some whole bunch of new stuff. And you know what they've done first? Everything that was beautiful and majestic that we used to see on our wall has been leveled. It's gone. What used to be here is gone. Even the rock that used to sit there that we passed, we could kind of tell where we were based upon where the rock is. The rock is gone. Now it's level. We don't even know where the rock used to be because it's now level. Don't you understand that when God gives you that visitation in your life, you better grab hold as quickly as you possibly can because what's coming next will level you. And when it's level, you just don't get back up. So it says... It will level you, and not only will it level you, but your children too. When the enemy comes, he comes to destroy until there is nothing left, nothing else. And it's all, you know what all this stems from? Do you know what all these, this stems from then and still now? It, it, it stems from rejection. Rejection, rejection. And even in our lives, there's rejection. As parents, we know it all too well. We know rejection. Why? Because we got children. If you got children, you have experienced some rejection. <laughs> you, have been, you have experienced some, you don't know what you're talking about I, I, until later. I love my, I love that my children, my children, I love them. You know why? Because now they have children of their own. My son was at the house on Saturday doing some, I mean Friday doing some work for me. And he looked at me and said, I get it. He didn't got to explain or finish the rest of the sentence. He just said, Dad, I get it. Yeah, I, I bet you do. Bet, I bet you do get it. And, and, and here's what else, here's what else you better grab a hold of. And, and you better grab a hold of some of this knowledge that I'm sharing so that while you get it, it's easier. Because he get it based upon his understanding. I'm saying, son, you better you better connect it to some of this word. So it says, level you and your children to the ground. Jesus came from glory for us. He came for us. He died. He took our place. Why? Because that's love. And Jerusalem looked like a city that had never had people, communities, churches, buildings, because it was all leveled. It's leveled. It, it was, it's gone. It's, 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 like, it's like coming, it's like you ever look at the news and, and you see a before picture of before the tornado came and after and the destruction, and it was just a once a vibrant community, and now it's leveled. It's, it's, it's gone, and it has to be built back up. And so he's telling them, hey, listen, because y'all didn't understand, and it's hidden from you, and he's, weep, he's wept over it because you know it had to be painful because he already knew what was to come. They didn't because, again, when you're still in your folly, you don't really know the magnitude of what's bestowed upon you or coming for you, but when it does, baby, it changes. Everything must go. Everything must go. If it's going to be leveled, that means everything must go. And it goes on to say, it says, your children, you to the ground, and they will not leave you one stone upon another. You ever, you ever, you ever see a business and they had a, uh, we going out of business sale, and you walk in there, ain't nothing in there. Is, is, that's, a, that's, a, that's how life was for them. It was going to be nothing left. And it was, listen, honey, let me show you. Let me, let me, I, I don't know if I can paint this picture for you and do it justice, but think about this. Think about a city. Think about a city of Villarica being cut off by supplies, being cut off and being leveled to the point that people died and there's no place to bury them because all the space has already been taken and what hasn't been taken has been leveled. There's no place for you to go. So bodies were upon bodies dying and, and you still got maybe a day or two left of life and you see this. And you know what you're going to say to yourself? I, I, I should have listened. That, that's what's going to happen to a lot of people. I, I should have listened. You say, well, 
well, how, do you, how do you know they didn't listen? Well, I'm just going to go by what the scripture says, okay? Let's look at what the scripture says. The scripture says, and they will level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Nothing's going nothing's to be left. He's already told them that it, the truth has been hidden to him. The Messiah came, but because he didn't look the way they thought he should look, you know how it is when you say you something and you don't look that way. You, you're supposed to be royalty and you're in just regular jeans and a t-shirt. Well, how much royalty is that? Jesus came and said, look, look at my... I, Look at my body of work. Look at what I have done. Look at what I have established. Look where I came from and where I'm going. Look at all of these things and make your decision. But, but man can't do that because man believes his own thoughts are superior to God's. Here's how you know that they didn't realize who they were dealing with or in the presence of. The last part of that verse says, because you didn't know the time of your visitation or, 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 or let's make it this way because you did not recognize it when God visited you you didn't recognize how many of us are the same way we just don't recognize and we don't recognize sometimes because of our own understanding or, or, or uh, uh, listen and all your, 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 your the things that you do he says get an understanding get an understanding why because understanding gives you clarity in movement understanding gives you a clarity about your life it gives you a focal point to move forward in a direction that's always pleasing to God but you got to get it but they did not recognize that God had visited them. Why? Because he didn't come the way they had expected him. How many blessings have we missed because it didn't come the way you expected it? How many jobs you passed on because it didn't come the way you expected it? I'm telling you there's always a blessing in something but sometimes we got to get in and trust God but we don't trust him. We try to trust our own mindset and that gets us in trouble. So when we look at these four verses, they didn't know, but he did. How did you know he knew? Because he said it. He came in weeping. He came in weeping because he knew. And he's still weeping for us today to come and reconcile with him. Today, that's what, what, that's what God is doing. And you say, well, how do you know he's weeping? Because when I look at my Bible, it said God created two genders. Two. And if there's more than two, he's weeping. <laughs> Tick tock that. <laughs> he, 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 here's this. Let me, let me say this and then I'm done. They didn't know. And maybe some people, just like today, they, did, they didn't want to know that the Messiah had come. The time that had been predicted, the time that had been prophesied, it wasn't like it came from osmosis. It was already prophesied that this day will come. And just like it's being prophesied that the end is near. You, you can be like those folks in Jerusalem and act like it ain't. But I'm telling you, you better get your ticket punched knowing that the time is, is near. He's going to return. Why? Because it says it in his word. Oh, well, where is it in his word? It says, well, in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at that last trumpet. Now you know it's coming. Why? Because it's been prophesied. We ain't exempt. We got to connect just like they should have connected based upon the truth and who is the truth Messiah. Now you can get caught up in all these denominations if you choose to. All I'm encouraging you to believe is that Jesus came he died and he rose for your sins. If you believe that just like the thief on the cross this day you'll be with me in in paradise so why is this all important because we don't want you to be ignorant we don't want you to be left behind and we want you to connect to the true Messiah understanding that he is the king all by himself because he's capable and he's more than capable well why would you want me to know this because if you don't know it your doom is going to be just like this you're going to be level and it's not going to be one stone left unturned I don't want you to perish I don't want you children to perish. I don't want my children to perish, but I guarantee you if they don't connect to this word and understand who God really is, perishing is in the future. Why? Because it's been prophesied 
It's been told, it's been shared, it's been written, it's been preached, it's been taught for you to get an understanding now because tomorrow is not promised. So don't miss the visit today that they visited, that they missed when he came to visit them to let them know I am the way, the truth, and the life. So like then and like now, people are searching for all types of answers, but I am telling you he knew you didn't but I'm here to let you know so that you don't have no excuse you cannot tell nobody I didn't know well it ain't so we want you to know that today is the day for salvation you better confess your sins accept him as your savior and understand that at the end you have an inheritance waiting for you God bless you and may heaven smile so richly upon you They didn't know, but he did. Now we all know what he knew. We know, and you know, even the, even the hardest sinner at the end of the day knows something about the Lord. Thief on the cross, he said, wow. Hey look, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. He had enough sense to know that that was something different about the one in the middle. The doors of the church are open. So you say, why? Why join the church? I, I can watch it on, on television. You, well, you can. You can watch it online. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it on your iPad. But there's something that's missing when you do not surround yourself among saints. People who have an understanding and, oh, and, and, and still experience it in trying to understand. You know, my daughter asked me a question the other day. She says, why do I continue to deal with the same things? I said, because your life is in the same circle. Your life is in the same circle. Your, your life is in the same circle. Look at, look at, look at who you're, you're fellowshipping with. Look at, look at the conversations you're having. And when you look at the conversation you're having in the fellowship, then you can understand what's, what, what, what the next day possibly could look like. So I encourage you to be a part of the church. And, 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 and well, don't all churches preach the truth? I'm going to tell you this. If it lines up with what you're reading, it's the truth. If it lines up, if you're reading it, and they explain that, now, there's some people that slick with it. That, that I ain't gonna, there's some slick people with it but, but you gotta have a, a, a level of discernment you gotta go and you gotta study it and, and, and I'm only giving you verses 41 to 40, 44 you, you gotta look at the ones before that and after that and it, it, it tells a more complete story I can't give you all of that in the time that we are allotted but, but you got enough time in your week I believe a message should be the seed that, that entices you to want to know more and then you go out and, 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 and do more and learn more and share more. So the doors of the church are open here at ASAR Community Church. You want to be a member? Simply fill out this card. Why? Because it's simple. We just need the information to know who you are. And just answer a question. Why do you want to be a member of this church? Because you want to know. And it, just, it, didn't, it shouldn't be a, a trivial answer. It should be an answer. Because... And what ministry would you like to serve in? Because ministry helps you grow. Because it puts you in fellowship with, with people. Every Tuesday at 7 o'clock, and this week I'll be here because I'm in town, uh, is our Bible study every Tuesday at 7 o'clock, our Tuesday town hall. The reason why we call it town hall, because we allow you to participate because you grow by touching it. You grow by saying it. You grow by injecting your thoughts and your understanding and your ideas and guess what it does it sharpens other people some people go oh wow I didn't know that or some people say hey you know what I was taught it this way and then together you can put them together and, and maybe you will reason and maybe you'll go away and go well let me come back it doesn't make a difference all what really makes a difference is that you're in it and you're a part of it and you're sharing it and you're growing if you can look at your life and say I've been going a year and I've grown then keep going if you've been going a year and you're still the same go somewhere else why go to a place and the food is bad who does that so that's what Tuesday Town Hall is our Bible study every Tuesday at 7 o'clock 
Here's something that I am very passionate about. I'm very passionate about giving. And the reason why I'm very passionate about giving because I understand the power of giving. And giving blesses you and allows us to operate this ministry. The monies that come into Asaw go out of Asaw. If I need gold fixtures at my house, I go to work and I take my money and I buy gold fixtures. I don't have to take the church money to buy gold fixtures. If I desire gold fixtures, and if I want gold fixtures, it's okay. I see people get mad. He got gold fixtures in his house. Well, if he went to work, he can do whatever he want to do with his money in his house. If you want to buy a Rolls Royce like Reverend Ike, go and get you a Rolls Royce. I ain't, listen, I ain't going to have no problem with you. I'm just going to say, boy, he sure is blessed. Enjoy your Rolls Royce. Because if I want one, I'll go do the same thing. Why? Because I'm blessed like that. God, God gives you the desires of your heart when it is connected to his will. But he ain't sitting up in heaven telling him, yeah, I'm going to give him a Rolls Royce. You can get a Rolls Royce if you got the credit and the money. You ain't got no credit and money and no job you get one. Well, then you might have thanked somebody. You should have thanked somebody. So when it comes to giving here at ASAR Community Church, you can give online. Go to asawcc.org. Or if you're here, you can give in the containers. I mean, the envelopes and place in the containers at the end of the service. And that's just about giving. That's it. That's it. Giving blesses you and allows us. So if you truly believe that, then you'll give. And I don't, the amount that you give is whatever's in your heart. I can't, I'm not going to convince you to do more than what's in your heart. You should do what's in your heart because giving here is not stressful. You're not under duress. We don't have no 911 phone calls. We don't send them out to nobody. We make sure that everything is taken care of because of the provision that God has given us to do the assignment. And if we've been called, he's going to provide. I love that message. I'm going to take that with me until the next pastor takes over at Asar. And I'm going to share that with him. And then I'm going to go sit down and let him figure it out like I had to figure it out. So with that being said and done, if all minds and hearts are clear, I'm just going to close in prayer. Father God, we're so thankful for your word. We're thankful for those who've come out. We're thankful for those who are watching online. We pray that something here tonight has been um, shared that encourages people to draw closer and, and, and to be a part of a church that's going to just treat, preach and teach the truth to the people so that they can draw closer to you and understand how magnificent you are, how magnificent you are and all that you have designed for us. So we're just thankful, Father, for this moment, this time, this fellowship, these people, these hearts that are on one accord, accepting you as their Lord and personal Savior. And if you're watching and you do not know him, it's very simple. It's, all you have to do is just believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus came, died, and rose. And that's him to come into your heart and be, be your Lord, be your Savior. And you are a part of the same family that has eternal life waiting at the end, just like the thief on the cross. So bless us now, Father, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you come to Asaph, we get out in an hour. <laughs>